So this is my iPhone 15 with 100% maximum capacity and 190 charging cycle counts. And this is how I was able to do this. What's up everybody, this is Mochaba, and today we're going to be going over how you can maintain maximum battery capacity on your iPhone after many, many charge charging cycles. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I do have 190 charging cycle counts on my iPhone 15. It's a little bit under a year old, and I have maintained 100% battery capacity. And the reason behind it is very simple, and I'm going to be breaking it down to you guys so that you may practice those at your homes, and hopefully you get the best out of your batteries. So fast charging was introduced to iPhone lineup starting with the iPhone 8 and iPhone X back in iOS 11. And in the latest models today, the maximum supported wattage is 27 watts. And the way that's calculated is watts equals voltage times current, which is 9 volts at 3 amps. 9 times 3 gets us 27 watts. So some things to consider when charging your iPhone are M5 certified chargers versus aftermarket. The M5 stands for made for iPhone certification and those are essentially chargers uh, made to meet Apple's strict quality and safety standards. This, this certification ensures the chargers won't overheat, short circuit, or provide inconsistent voltage which can damage your iPhone's battery or even the device in, itself. So essentially what these M5 chargers do is it communicates with the iPhone to regulate power, ensuring a stable flow. They often use high quality components, which means less risk of surges or voltage spikes. Now, if you've ever bought an aftermarket charger and it's like super lightweight, but it advertises that it's got like 30 watts of charging capability, they're probably using really cheap components in there and it's likely that it's going to damage your battery over a long period of time. So I would not recommend that. I would always go with Apple's um, certified chargers, which, which are truly rated for 20 watts. Now, if you go on their website and you look down in the fine print, they tell you that they can charge 50% in 30 minutes. The way they do that is some basic calculation. I'll put it up on the screen. It's fairly easy to derive that. Essentially doing the math, um, you get about 24 minutes, but with some, you know, um, conditions, depending on the temperature, environment, everything, they round that up to 30 minutes. So it is true that you can get 50% um, charge in the 30 minutes, but it all depends on how good of a condition your battery environment is. So if you're in a place that's too cold or too hot, you're probably not going to get that. So here they are. The way to avoid um, depletion of your maximum battery capacity are you need to make sure that you charge your phone's battery between 20 and 80%. So ideally, you don't want to let your battery drop below 20% or charge above 80%. And it's essentially the same thing in modern devices. You want to stay in this in this range. So there's also an option in the iPhone called something like optimized battery charging. And this helps manage this. Make sure you're using official certified chargers. Um, and then also do fast charging, but do it in moderation. You don't want to always do fast charging because that will produce a lot of heats and over time that messes with the battery and so over time either your battery will start bloating or um, you just start losing that capacity so over time this will lead to a faster degradation um, of your battery and then also of course avoid draining to zero percent so if you fully deplete the battery that stresses the battery cell and um, so you don't want to do that. So you want to always try to keep it 10% to 20% for maximum lifespan. So you might be asking yourself, what does the optimized battery charging do? So essentially, this what this feature does is it uses machine learning to understand your daily charging habits and patterns. So for example, it learns when you typically charge your phone, like overnight or at work, and when you typically unplug it, like in the morning or before leaving home. So this allows the iPhone to adjust its charging behavior based on your regular routine. 
So essentially, the way it charges is it's in two stages. So in the stage one, what it does is it fast charges to 80% with like a fast charger. So if you have a 20 watt fast charger, what it does is for the first 80%, it charges really fast. And I'll put up a graph which shows the percentage versus the, uh, the voltage versus the current and how that all relates to how fast it charges in this first stage. And then in the stage two, there's a delay charging. So let's say you have about 20 minutes, 30 minutes before you wake up. The machine learning learns this. And so it only charges to 80%, keeps that at 80 And let's say you wake up at 7 a.m. at 6.30 or something, it will start charging the other 20% and it gets it up to 100. So when you wake up, it's at 100%. So essentially, that's what it's doing. This is for um, to save the battery health and essentially it will prolong the battery over time. So the whole reason this happens is because lithium ion batteries experience the most stress when they're kept at full charge for extended periods. For example, when you're at the airport, you want to keep your phone plugged in and play a game or surf the web and you just want that 100%. But actually over the long period, um, that's going to damage your battery. So you don't want to be doing that. So essentially the way it works in the two stages, it tries to keep your phone at 80% for most of the battery charging cycle. And then only it reaches 100% shortly before you need it or you're about to disconnect it so that this reduces the wear on the battery. And then there's stuff like temperature management, which essentially does slower charging after the 80% so that it creates less heat and this prevents degradation. So this feature actually will not work for sporadic charging. This only works if you're kind of like on a regular charging routine. So it works best if, you know, you always go to sleep around 10 o'clock, you plug it in, you always wake up at 7 a.m. And so this machine learning learns your routine. And based off of that, it's able to charge more efficiently and effectively. And then also location based. So like it detects where you're placing the device and where you're taking it off. So it knows like when you're going to work and stuff like that. So based off of all that, It's able to optimize the battery charging routine and is able to keep your your battery health at a higher capacity over a long period of time. And again, the whole purpose of this is to make your battery capacity last longer over a longer period of time. If you're the type of person that's always upgrading every year, you might not care for this video. But essentially... I tend to keep my iPhones for at least two, three years. And so I want to make sure that I'm taking care of the battery and that I'm doing all that I can to preserve the battery capacity. So in conclusion, essentially, the during these fast charging, most phones, the voltage stays relatively constant. So it's staying at nine volts during the fast charging phase. And then it, it goes a little bit higher towards that last 20 percent but the current drops significantly and that's the reason why it runs cooler in that last 20 percent because it's trying to keep your battery health in a better state so essentially this is the way that this feature works and it has been proven that it works well i've used it for a year and i have experienced nothing but good things, but that's because I'm always waking up at 5 a.m. disconnecting my phone, and I'm always plugging it in around 9, 10 p.m. Well, now it's your turn. You can go ahead and try this on your next iPhone, your current one, whatever the case may be, and hopefully that these tips help you in preserving the maximum battery capacity on your iPhone. This video was helpful. Please leave a comment or like, and thanks for watching.